Hi everybody! Alright, so today we're going to be talking about how we actually got separated from God in the first place and um, what our purpose is as Christians. So as followers of Jesus, as people that believe and live for Jehovah God, what is our purpose and you know, um, also how did we even get separated? Because as we've discussed before, um, in before in our uh, previous videos of, about Jesus, we learned that we we need Jesus, our Savior, because we need to be reconciled with the Father God, uh, Jehovah. So, but how did that even happen, right? And what does that have to do with our purpose now, as Christians? So um, today, that's what we're going to be talking about. Okay. Um, I hope by understanding um, this truth that you'll be able to root your faith in Jesus stronger and be able to better give your life to serving Jesus as your Christ, as your Savior. And as humans, we look for a purpose and meaning to life. And we often associate that with a calling or a career or a passion. Um, but today I want to discuss the very fundamentals of our existence. Um, something that as humans we were created to have that, that the Father God put in, into us that he made us for um, okay so let's start with in the beginning right in the very beginning and we can find this in the Bible in Genesis which is the first book in the Bible so um, it actually starts with in the Garden of Eden so we know that um, Jehovah the Father God um created us humans he made the first human man which was Adam and he created Eve from Adam which was the first human woman and then he placed Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden and he gave them instructions and these are our, um, our purposes then and even as we live to this very day these instructions are still vital to our existence so let's read Genesis um, chapter 1, it's going to be 28 through 30. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food also to every beast of the earth to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life i have given every green herb for food and it was so so um let's let's kind of review this right so in 28 he says be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it so um, he's saying be fruitful and in biblical terms being fruitful means to be you know having um, doing good things doing good deeds and being successful and then um, multiply is to reproduce so we're supposed to be reproducing um, so you know having children and generations of children and fill the earth and subdue it so um, it says we have dominion over all the fish of the sea, all the birds of the air, every living thing on the earth. So this is when God gave man um, um, authority over all things. He gave, he gave the, the world, the earth, his creation, the earth, and then all the animals and, every, and all the plants. Um, all these things, every herb and fruit, these are all for food. So, and then we're supposed to cultivate and take care of the earth. Um, you know, he gave all these things under our authority, and we're supposed to take care of his beautiful creations. Um, so those are, um, and then we have all these things for food. So these are, these are the basic instructions that he gave to us in, in the very beginning. So um, those are still instructions that we should are supposed to live by even now to reproduce um, to fill the earth and to take care of the earth and all that's in it so let's go to chapter 2 now and we'll look at verses 15 and 17 so it says 
Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge and good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So that was the other um, instruction God told us. Do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And why? Because in the day you eat of it, you'll die. So, Jehovah God actually was trying to protect us from death. Um, and But now you understand why we have death. Why do we die? You know, because we disobeyed that one instruction. We disobeyed it. We, um, well, Adam and Eve did. They, they disobeyed it. They ended up eating it. And um, eating of the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil. And so that's when evil and sin was conceived in us. And because of sin, we got separated from God because God is holy. And so now that we sin, we were spiritually separated from God. And um, the punishment, the wages of sin is death. And so now... Like he said, the day you eat of it, you're going to die. So now we die. We don't live forever as he wanted us to. And that is the purpose of Jesus, that we have, um, through Jesus, we have that chance to live forever, to live again and to live forever. Um, so we can see that in Romans 5.12. It talks about the sin, sin uh, separating us from God and that it leads to death. So let's... Uh, in Genesis, we'll read 2 through 5. Um, Genesis chapter 3, I'm sorry. Let's read, actually, let's, leave, let's read 1 through 5, okay? Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Um, then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, this brings up different um, things which we'll talk about, but, so we see here she was deceived by the serpent, which we find out um, in the rest of the Bible is the devil, which is Satan. So, um, he deceived, he lied and he deceived her into disobeying God's commandment. Um, so he was challenging God's authority. Um, and other things, like I said, we'll, we'll go over in just a minute. But So that's how she ended up disobeying. Um, so let's read the same chapter 3, on verse 19. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So um, before that verse, there's other uh, the a few other verses that... These are talking about the punishments that the consequences of them having disobeyed um, because of they them disobeying eating of the fruit of the or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, um, and that one is is talking about that we will have to work for our food forever, um, and also at the end it's talking about us dying. So like again, this is why we have death and. This is death is the the consequence for sin. So now we have sin in us, and that's why we need Jesus. So this is how we got spiritually um, disconnected from God in the first place. And um, and then let's read twenty three through twenty four, same chapter. Okay, chapter three twenty three through twenty four. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden, which is. Um, he's talking about Adam. He sent Adam out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and placed a cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of tree of life. 
And so... <clears throat> So that we would not go back and take of the tree of life. Now you might wonder why, but um, that is a discussion for another um, sermon. But but we see here this is how we were taken out. We were expelled from the Garden of Eden, and um, we'll reap the consequences. Okay, so now let's kind of try to understand what this has to do with our purpose um, for God. So, we are warriors of Christ. So basically, to know how to accomplish our mission as warriors, we must understand our enemy and his mission. And whose enemy, who's the enemy? Satan. So we need to understand what Satan's mission is in order to um, overcome him. Okay, so let's recall how Adam and Eve got disobeyed God in the first place. They were tempted by the serpent, which is Satan. So they were tempted by him. And like we discussed, you know, why, why would Satan even lie about that? So we, we know here that, you know, and throughout the whole Bible, that Satan actually and his wicked ones, those who follow him, rebel against God and his kingdom. So we do have an enemy. And it's Satan and his army. And they are rebelling against God and their, his army, which is us as Christians. And so, um, yeah, if you know, you read about, you read throughout the Bible, you'll learn more about this. Now, in Genesis um, chapter three, in four through five, Satan turns us to believe that you know we can become like God, right? We can be our own gods. Um, why, why should we rely on what you know Jehovah God says? Because we can think for ourselves. We can live for ourselves. We can serve ourselves. And <clears throat> that our existence doesn't really rely on God's authority or what he says. So that's, um, that's one mission that Satan you know, wants us to, to, to think that we can reject God because we can be our own. But we clearly see that we, we as humans... Um, you know, sure, I guess, you know, in humanly ways we can think for ourselves, but even then, the ways of the world cannot ever... As living through the world, we prove that the ways of man do not really compare to the ways of God at all, because we cannot completely be perfect, or just, or righteous, or have complete peace, or goodness, and love and life and, and uh, eternal life, you know, we can't have any of that. There's always war going on. There's always hatred going on. There's always strife and suffering and selfishness and death and so on, right? So, although we try and try to understand um, the best way to live, with, if, you know, as one with each other, we, we can't. There's nothing we can do. So that... Um, that already proves that man can't really rule themselves, okay? Even um, we struggle with understanding our own self. Um, you know, the Bible talks about that. The, the, the heart is, the, the death of the heart, you know, is treacherous. So we can't even really understand ourselves completely. It takes a lot of spiritual understanding and self-reflection. So it's a lie that you know, we should be our own gods, because we can't, um, and, but this is what, you know, Satan wants us to believe, and the world wants us to believe, um, because it belongs to Satan, of course, um, <clears throat> so, and the other thing is, we've learned, we've learned that in the Bible, it, you know, it helps us to understand that we were made by God, for God, you know, and to serve Him, and for Him to be our God, our ultimate ruler, our ultimate, you know, who we worship. So, you know, he was meant to rule us. He created us. How, how can you be better than the creator? Right? So, we, again, you know, and then I like the, the scripture, Revelations chapter 4, uh, verse 11. It's beautiful, and it really helps you understand that 
that right, right, the rightful sovereignty really belongs to God, not us, and not Satan, and not anybody else. Um, so we now we know, of course, again that we have this enemy, Satan, who's deceiving us, and we have to realize that you know we need to obey God and trust God because He is our rightful ruler and, and sovereign God, and we shouldn't believe in the lies of Satan that or make him our ruler or make ourselves the rulers because we can't um we weren't made like that we weren't made that way we were made to serve God so um to accept you know God God brings us goodness but he gives us a choice right we have that free will that he gave us um now that our eyes have been opened now that we, you know, we, <clears throat> they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and our eyes are open, <clears throat> we have a choice that, you know, now that Jesus, you know, he, God sent Jesus for us and he's our savior, we have the choice that we can either accept him, um, accept this truth, or we can continue rebelling and believing what we will um, or living for ourselves it's our choice but this is this is what's going on in the spirit realm so as you know Christians one of our purposes is actually battling with Satan and the world um, because the actual ruler of the world isn't Jesus it's Satan and we learn this because in John 1836 Jesus says it and my kingdom's not of this world right when he returns he will have the rightful sovereignty again um but until then this world lays in the hand of the wicked one and we see this in several uh scriptures you know john 12 31 also john 14 30 john 16 11 second corinthians 4 3 through 4 and first john 5 19 in fact let's go ahead and read uh first john 5 19 We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And then let's read Luke 4, chapter 4. And that's verse 5 through 7. Then the devil taking him, he was taking Jesus, up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said to him all this authority I will give you in their glory for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish therefore if you will worship before me all will be yours and so here we see you know Satan himself said it it's been delivered to me you know I'm the ruler of this world right now I have the power I have the authority so that's another vital thing to understand is that this world we're not supposed to be a part of because Jesus' kingdom's not of this world and it belongs to Satan and we don't want anything to do with him, right? We're, we're fighting against him. Um, but let's go ahead and go ahead and read uh, verse 8 too, just to finish that out. And Jesus answered to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. So see, Satan wants us, you know, he wants the power and he wants us to worship him or worship ourselves or whatever else, um, but not to follow God, not to worship God. So um, there's obviously that battle going on, right? So we're taking part in, Je in Jesus' kingdom, God's kingdom, but we're still living in a world ruled by the devil. So that's why we're in the middle of this battle, because... We understand, though, that because Jesus, you know, Jesus actually already won the war in the spirit realm. Because he has, he, when he came and defeated, um, you know, he was crucified and he took away the world's sin and he took back the keys of death. Um, so he defeated Satan in that moment. So he has the rightful sovereignty. God has given him the kingdom. 
He has the truth, the life, and the justice. It's already been won. The devil is defeated. Satan is defeated already. So, how is there still a battle going on? Well, because that happened in the spirit realm. But because the, the, this physical realm and what we, we live in, it still belongs to Satan. And um, at the very end, that Satan's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. But now, right now, he's roaming the earth with his wicked ones, those who follow him. And they're seeking to mislead people and turn them from God. And how do we know this? There's several chapters about this, you know, too. Um, but let's read Revelations, actually. And we'll read uh, chapter 12. And that's going to be um, verse 9 through 17. So the great dragon, which, you know, cast out that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So here it says, he deceives the whole world, cast into the earth. So he's deceiving the world. You know, um, it's, it's, you know, there, there are... There are lots of, in his deception, you know, I think people really underestimate him. And I'm not trying to give, I'm not trying to give credit here or anything like that. But I want people to really understand how seriously sneaky he is. Um, and it's so important you know that because if you don't know your enemy, how will you defeat him, right? And the reason I'm bringing this up because it's so easy for, for you, you know, to want to side with him if you think oh it was done wrongly or have sympathy or even for your own selfish reason like well if I were him I would have you know whatever I hear these things all, all I'm saying is I want to bring it up because I hear these things and I really want people to understand it's meant to sound that way um because that's how he's going to get you to it's how he's going to deceive you and tr trick you into following his ways or following your own ways anyway except for God's way, because it doesn't matter as long as you're not helping God, um, you know, he's going to use any way, and, and it's that sneaky, it's that sneaky, and it's that, it's that, um, you know, deceptive, so really don't underestimate him, because he really can, you know, and he does actually, knows your weakest point, he can hit you there, I just want you to understand that. Um, but yeah, he is here to deceive the whole world. People that say he's not, he doesn't, it, the Bible too calls him the father of lies. So, I mean, yeah, the devil, he's, an, he's like the most powerful angel. He knows things, right? But he, um, you know, some people say he doesn't have to lie. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have to, but doesn't you know, mean that, and, and sometimes he might not, you know, in ways just to get, you know, to get on your good side, or to, to convince you, is what I mean, um, but he twists the truth, though, even when he doesn't lie, he'll twist it, and again, it's a very, it's a very cunning way of deception, that's why I'm bringing up, you know, to be aware, because he's really good at what he does. He's the father of lies. And I want you to not underestimate him. That's all. Um, so yeah. He is actually deceiving the world. He is the enemy. Um, so don't don't ever second guess that. Okay. Um, you know the Bible talks about it plenty enough. If you want reassurance. And, and just to um, point out some more scriptures. You know 2 Corinthians 11.14. And 1 Peter 5, 8. Um, I'm not going to read these, but basically they talk about Satan being coming as an angel of light. So, yeah, again, you know, it's it's a way to con convince you so that you're not, you're not, oh, well, yeah, if it's an obvious enemy, you're going to ignore him, right? He's not going to come in that form. He's going to come as something that seems good. And that's the point of a deception. And then, you know, it talks about him being a, a roaring lion seeking out to... Um, to devour so he's looking he's looking for weak people and, and people that will second guess him or you know he knows 
exactly where to hit you. He's looking for that. So again, don't second guess that. But anyway, um, back to that. So yeah, the Satan is defeated in the spirit realm. Jesus has defeated his power, but because we're still physically here and he's he's roaming the earth with his wicked ones and all that. Pe if people are not aware of this, because remember how we get saved. We get saved by believing in Jesus, right? If we don't believe, if we never accept Jesus, we never believe in him, we die in our sins with the evil one. So, as long as people are not aware about Jesus and about, you know, Satan being defeated, they will allow evil to rule their lives. So that's why we're still out of battle because and these are our, our, the next purposes, um, our next, you know, um, reasons to be living um, and having purpose in our life as Christians is because one, we still have this battle to win on earth to, you know, expose Satan's lies and to bring as many people as we can to this truth. And we have this, um, you know, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Romans 10, uh, th uh, 14 through 17, um, verses 14 through 17, Proverbs 24, verses 11 through 12, Acts chapter 8, 29 through 31, Jude chapter 1, 23, and Psalms 82, verse 4, and then let's read Mark 16. So Mark's, uh, Mark that's chapter 16 and then it's going to be 15 through 16 and Jesus said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned so again that's why we have a battle still because we need to be teaching people so that they will be saved um and so the other the other purpose um for us to be living as christians is to stay true to the very end to be saved because um and what do i mean by that well let's go ahead and read actually matthew chapter 24 verse 13. So this says, But he who endures till the end shall be saved. So we need to understand, and then we can read James 1 um, verse 12, and James chapter 5 verse 11, and Job 2 verse 4. Um, we need to understand that in order to actually, we accept Jesus, right? And we believe in him and that's how we enter into the covenant with him you know become saved but if you stray away like don't don't again don't underestimate the devil like you can still stray away and so there's plenty of times like the scriptures I've told you in the Bible it talks about actually enduring till the end in which is when Jesus returns so in order to be saved we need to endure to the very end till you know either we die or till Jesus returns. Um, so we ourselves are also battling not just for others but for ourselves to stay focused on Jesus and His kingdom, right? And we're like Job, um, actually, the man Job in the Bible, in the book of Job. We're like him because we are having no matter all the stuff going on um, around us we are having to hold tight to our faith and stay steadfast and and continue to worship and trust in God no matter what happens here in this world because again we're living in an imperfect world it's full of evil it's full of sin it's ruled by evil so there are going to be and that's why that's why uh, there are going to be trials and suffering and death and that's why walking the Christian life is really hard um, because we are going against the grain but that's our other purpose is to be steadfast and um, stay loyal to God because if not we're gonna be we're gonna let Satan what we're gonna allow him to win over us in this battle 
So um, that is our other purposes. So to teach others about the truth and to also endure till the very end, you know, ourselves. Um, and then we're going to go into our um, next reason, our next purpose in life, which is that we are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors of Jesus. Now, what, what, what does ambassador mean? Um, you know, short and simple, an ambassador is like a representer of a country, and he's appealing to a foreign land or a foreign country. So we can read that in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 12, that we are ambassadors of Christ. So we are representing God's kingdom while being in this foreign, this world that is not God's world. You know, it's not, it's not ruled by God. It's ruled by Satan. Um, so, you know, it's like we're, we're, you know, we don't belong to this country is what I mean. We belong in Jesus's kingdom, but we're here appealing to these people. We're here appealing to the world because we're trying to save people. So that's why we are ambassadors of Christ, right? So we have these personal missions as Christians to accomplish while we're here on earth. Um, like becoming more Christ-like. We work, we strive toward becoming um, holy and righteous because the Bible teaches us that we, we need to cultivate, um, you know, righteousness and Holy Spirit in us. And... Um, to strive to be like Jesus. So, you know, Romans 12, verse 2 is a good scripture to read for that. Um, we're also here bringing glory to God, you know, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, uh, Romans 11, 36, and Isaiah 43, 7. Those are great scriptures to read about that. We are here to actually bring glory to God, you know, um, and, and it goes into how we become more Christ-like, living for God and, and um, you know, helping people understand. Kind of like we came to know God through Jesus. Well, it's the same, like, people come to know Jesus because they see how we are, you know, and they are attracted to that. Um, so we are here to actually give to others. We're here to take care of other people, to serve other people, and especially our families, right? So... Acts 20, 35, uh, Romans 12, 10, 1 Timothy 5, 8, and Mark chapter 10, 43 through 45, and also 1 Peter 4, chapter, I'm um, sorry, chapter 4, verse 10, and Galatians 5, 13. Those are all awesome scriptures to be reading about. Hey, we need to, our, you know, our priority is to give to other people too. You know, it's not to just live for ourselves. It's to live for God, but it's also to live for others and to take care of others and to serve one another. And Jesus taught us these things. He taught us that the first, um, to be the first, you, you know, come last, right? You serve, to be the best, you actually serve people. And Jesus said, I, I ministered. And if I'm your teacher, what do you think you should be doing? You should be ministering as well. So, um, there's a thing. And then that actually brings us to um, Jesus' commandments. So, our other purposes in life are to follow through with everything Jesus commanded us to do. Um, and a few of those examples, you know, and all those things can be found in the New Testament. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are the Gospels of Jesus, but also um, throughout the New Testament, it teaches you how to be more Christ like. Um, but a few of those I'll share with you. So being the light of the world, right? Being, you know, the uh, helping people come to know the truth. That's in Matthew 5, 16. To strive for the kingdom, which is Jesus' kingdom. We're, again, we're here temporarily, so we're really trying to keep our, you know, focus on his kingdom, to seek him first. And, and Jesus says, seek my kingdom and my righteousness first, above all. So that's Matthew six thirty three. Luke, tw uh, I'm sorry, Luke 13, 24, and Philippians 3, 14, and Matthew 11, 12. We're here to worship God. And actually, I'm going to read the next two scriptures because this is, you know, the most important thing above all of it. You know, first and foremost, these things. Um, so let's read Matthew 22, and then we'll read um, verses 13 through 38.
So verses 37 through 38. Jesus said to him, You... You shall love, sorry, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second, this is verse 39, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So that's powerful these are the two most important commandments to first love your god above all with all your heart all your soul all your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself so love god love others love god love others that is the most those are the most important and all these other things hang on that because if you love god and if you love others you're going to want to obey god you're going to want to take care of others not hurt them not bring harm right so those are our biggest purposes ever <laughs> um and then to remain in god's love you know oh let's read john too let's read john that's chapter 13 because this is also helping you understand about um our purpose in loving other people so that's chapter 13 it's verse 34 through 35 it says, And a new commandment, which is Jesus, Jesus is talking, And a, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I loved you, and that you also love one another. <clears throat> By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So again, it's another another important reason to love others is because you're showing that you are his follower. Again, we are ambassadors of Christ. People know this by watching us and by our love and by our goodness that's how we bring glory to God um so and and Jesus repeated it so many times about loving others so that's why it's so important to really understand we really need to love other people as Jesus loves us and as we love ourselves so true and good and pure love um, to remain in God's love, John fifteen nine through twelve, and to Je to teach what Jesus commanded us, Matthew twenty eight nineteen through twenty, and in all these things that we treasure on our on our earth, um, we must really hold to the most valuable thing, which is knowing God. That is our highest purpose. Again, to love God above all. You know, so like I mentioned before sometimes when we say well what's our purpose we kind of look to a calling or passion or something um which is good i mean we we all have a difference to make in the world yes um but the most important purpose though is to know god the most valuable thing that will last forever is is god in our life um because the things of this world will pass away we will pass away but in the afterlife you know, you'll want to be living forever and saved with, with Jesus. So that's the most valuable thing. So let's read Jeremiah, uh, the book of Jeremiah, and that's going to be chapter 9. And we'll read 23 through 24. Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the w mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. So let's remember to do this. Um, so, I, like I said, I really hope that this helps you understand your purposes um, in life as a Christian living the Christian life because again this is not religion it's a life it's your life I don't even like saying it's a lifestyle because it really is your life your very essence of existence and it entails um you know the first commandments which is taking care of the earth and reproducing you know creating more life right feeling this beautiful earth that God created and taking care of it um and then uh it's also about 
resisting our enemy. We are in a battle and we need to save other people and defeat the devil um, on this earth and to also stay steadfast and faithful to God so that we can live for him forever. And as we live for him, becoming more Christ-like, being our, the ambassadors of Christ that we are, being more Christ-like, bringing glory to God, loving God above all, and loving others, and so forth. So, And coming to know God more and more. So um, these are all your purposes in life, and I really hope that this helps you live for him better. And, um, and just to close out, now, I really do want to share this with you, though, because we do understand, though, that we do have callings and we do have a difference to make. You know, we all are born with talents, specific talents, specific um, gifts and, and purposes, right? These are our, our, you know, purposes here on while we're on Earth. Um, and so I just want you to know that there will be times, though, when you're being called to something, um, that God really wants us to trust in Him. You know, it, 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 it's not always going to be like, it's not always going to seem easy or obvious, but if you pray about it and you really put it in God's hands, you'll understand, um, you'll understand and you'll hear God's voice and He will guide and protect you. He will direct your steps. He will. And He'll lead you to where you're supposed to be. There are going to be times that he really wants you to just trust in him. It may not make sense to you sometimes or whatever, but he really wants you to trust him, you know, and not just rely on, on our own understanding. There's going to be times you're going to have to take leaps of faith, and there's going to be painful times that you just need to learn how to grow um, or let go or, you know, and have discernment. Exercise your spiritual walk. Exercise your discernment praying and trusting that God will guide you with Holy Spirit and protect you even you know helping you with wise you know wise decisions and not always following your hearts but knowing that God will guide you where he wants you to go and you know he did this with the apostles he guided them with Holy Spirit so we have to really trust in him and leave that in his hands um, but don't be afraid to go after what you believe God has called you to do because if you're praying about it He'll guide you, and He'll help you through. He will provide for you. He will. So I want to share two more verses with you, um, just to reassure you about your your purpose in life and your calling. Um, because, again, as a Christian, it's really awesome, though, because as a Christian, our purpose doesn't end here on this temporary earth, because we will have eternal life with God. It continues into the afterlife so every good thing that you have here you're building up in your afterlife with God in heaven um, so it's really it's awesome um, and so yeah let's go ahead and let's go ahead and read these two chapters uh, these two scriptures and uh, so we're gonna read Ephesians and that's chapter 2 and that's verse 10 And it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So he has these good works as, uh, you know, as, you know, uh, for us to follow through with and bring glory to him. He's already prepared it for us. So we do have purposes, we do have callings, and God works them all together for, you know, the good of those who love him, which is actually another scripture. Um, so we can trust in that. And then the other um, beautiful scripture I want to share with you is in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. And it says, for I, and this is God talking, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So I just want to leave you with those and that you will have a lot of great hope and you know um just faith in god in all your callings and all your purpose and that you'll live it out fruitfully thank you so much for joining me today and please share with others thank you